What's going on everybody? Welcome to another TKinter tutorial video, part of our mega series making an actual trading application for Bitcoin. So in this video what we're going to be doing is uh, actually generating this candlestick graph, the basic one. We don't actually have uh, the indicators or anything like that yet, but we're going to be working on those in the next few videos. My dog just decided to barge in, sorry about that. <laughs> anyway, uh, let's go ahead and get started. So, uh, we are in our animate function. We just wrote a bunch of this code, except exception as e, blah, blah, blah. So, enter, enter, delete, delete, and you should be in line with this L if here. Now, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to do C sticks for candlesticks, and C sticks is going to equal uh, candlestick underscore OHLC. And this will be, uh, first of all, what subplot do you want to plot that to? We want to plot it to the main subplot, so it'll be just A. Um, then the data itself. And this is OHLC, and then it's dates, open, high, low, close. So you would say something like this with a pandas data frame. So OHLC, and then you would say inside of that, uh, a list. So it's a list within this data frame. And the first data would be MPL uh, dates, comma, then we will have uh, open, comma, high, comma, low, comma, close. And then outside of these uh, brackets, you do period values. So it's just the values of each of these little bits. Now we're going to say width. This is the width of the candlestick. So if you have a lot of data, you want the candlestick to be very narrow. Otherwise, they're going to run over each other. And if you have uh, very little data, you want the sticks to be kind of fat so you can actually see them. You know, So width equals uh, candle width, which we set long ago. And then uh, you can specify color up and color down. So these are like the colors of the candlestick. So if price goes up for that candlestick, the color will be green in general. And then if the price goes down, the color will be red. Now we're using light and dark, so we're just gonna say color up um, equals light color. That's actually camel case, so light color like that. And then color down equals dark color. So kind of a long line, um, but that's it. So those are that's how we actually plot uh, our candlesticks. Um, now, any good graph has labels, so we're going to do a dot set underscore y label, um, and that is going to be price. Uh, next up, we have uh, a special que question for Huobi, since Huobi is quite the troublemaker. Uh, we're going to say if exchange equals Huobi. Um, a2 dot fill underscore between um, we're gonna say volume data MPL MPL <laughs> dates and then uh, starting point is zero and and oh you know what we're making a mistake here uh, Huobi does not have volume data. That is why we actually ask if exchange does not equal Huobi. A2 dot fill between volume data and PL dates uh, between the zero because we should not have negative volume. Uh, then volume data uh, volume. And then uh, face color face color equals dark color. And that is going to be our um, volume data. And then we're going to do a2.set underscore y label if we have it. Uh, and we're going to set that as volume. And that's if the exchange is not equal to Huobi. And we've already predefined uh, the a2 subplot. So we don't really need to throw anything else at this program. So now we're going to say a dot x axes dot set underscore major underscore locator. Um, and we're going to use m ticker dot max n locator. 
And we're just going to set that to 3 for now. We can change that later on, but 3 is good enough. And then we're going to do the exact same thing here, only um, we're going to format our dates. So x axis dot set underscore major underscore formatter. And that will be m dates dot date formatter. And uh, just like before, uh, percent year dash percent m dash percent day. Uh, and then we'll do uh, space hours colon. Uh, percent M um, and we don't really need seconds this is not tick data so there's really no point minutes is even a little bit pushing it but that's okay um, so now um, we're gonna do PLT dot set P um, and then we're gonna say a dot get X tick labels um, and then we're gonna say visible equals false and in theory, that really needs to only be the case if the exchange is not will be. Otherwise, we shouldn't be doing that. Um, that's probably a glitch in my main code, but we'll see. Um, so then, uh, if the top indicator um, does not equal none, none, not gnome, PLT dot set P and then basically we um, we're just deleting X labels here so paste that's top indicator should be a zero right um, now we're gonna do we'll just copy this copy paste instead of top it'll be bottom and then instead of a two or a zero it would be a two um, Right? Yeah. So, so A0 is the actual top indicator, and we're removing its date. But in this case, we're removing the date from volume, and we're leaving the, the date on the bottom indicator. Now, um, we use X um, just, I don't think we really actually, well, yeah, I guess we do. So, so never mind. <laughs> so we're going to use X. X equals the length of um, OHLC um, and then we just pick a random variable it doesn't really matter um, it's the length of that minus one and this is the data point right that'll be the most recent data point in a list okay so the length is it starts from one right and a list starts at zero so that's why we do negative one so that will be X will be the value uh, or X will be the uh, element ID of the last element in the list. So we can get last price, basically. That's the whole point of why we're doing that. So now we just ask if data pace equals um, 1D, for example. If that's the case, then we're going to say our title equals exchange. That's the pretty exchange name plus quotes space one day data with space plus oops end quotes plus uh, resample size plus quotes space bars and then we're doing a new line so backslash n that literally makes a new line on the screen last price colon um, then plus the string version of OHLC close with the element of X there it is people fancy so now um, we're gonna do this copy and then paste and paste so we've got one day three day seven day and eventually we'll add more and we'll have to make this a little more dynamic, um, but that's okay. Um, so then we just need to comment that or edit that, that, and that. No problem. Um, even if you did like 30 day, you could probably get away with that, but then anything greater, you need to change this text as well. So we'll have to think about the best way uh, to incorporate that as we move on, but um, cool. So enter, enter, coming down. 
if top indicator uh, does not equal none, uh, we need to throw the title on top of it. So we go AO dot set underscore title and we set the title to what we just defined as title up here. Um, and that's if top indicator is not none, but otherwise else the, the uppermost graph is going to be the main graph. So it would be just a dot set title uh, title. Okay. So, uh, so that's that. Then we will say, um, we'll just, we, we just print here new graph. We don't really, it's just to alert us that it's been updated. New graph and then dat counter equals zero. And we have all this extra space. Let's just pick up all the space. Failed in the non-tick animate, that's fine. Um, and then and if, uh, if all of that occurs, uh, we will say dat counter equals 9,000. So it will immediately try to reset. Um, and then if we scroll way up to the very top of our animate function that I'm now lost, you'll see, um, actually we didn't, um, if chart load, uh, hold on, let me think here. <laughs> Uh, I'm trying to think of where our dat counter is supposed to uh, show itself. I suppose dat counter is just um, let's see. Let me count this now. So that would be here if dat counter is greater than twelve. And that is, I just need to count it. So one, two, three, four. So now at the very, very bottom here, after the exception, we have uh, one, two, three, four, else, and then dat counter plus equals one. So that continues updating it. And when the graph updates, that counter is reset to zero, and it will only re-update that graph when dat counter is greater than 12, wherever that is. <laughs> here. <laughs> okay, so now let me uh, come down here, go to the very bottom and where it says Annie equals animation, uh, change the interval to 2000. Um, the exchanges mostly update their API information every 2000, and 2000 seconds, uh, so we'll do that. So basically what we're saying is any any graph that is not um, any graph that is not a tick data graph, update every 24 seconds, right? Because we're doing 12, 12 times 2, 24, 24 seconds. And so later on, we can actually, instead of using 12, we can allow the user to set that. So they can update as frequently as every two seconds. And we can even change that as well. Um, every two seconds, if they want. Um, or every minute, five minutes, hour, whatever they want. Um, and that's going to be useful mo mostly for automated trading. Um, otherwise, it really just doesn't matter because um, you're not going to spend any money, so it doesn't matter. So let's hit save and run this. It has been a lot of code since we've actually ran the, the, the code that we've been writing. So um, I imagined we would get an error, but I, I guess that code that we've written hasn't actually shown itself yet. So let's pick one day uh, data frame. And it I cannot believe it, but it looks like we graphed it. Fabulous. <laughs> okay, so let's try three day then. Let's really push it to the limit, guys. Um, okay, so we've got the, the data updating. We've got a pretty cool graph. We've got last price. Uh, we've got a great open, high, low, close. We don't have top indicators. Uh, the main indicators, in theory, we just wrote, we did write, but let's try it. No, failed. Unsupported operand. Non Slow down there, son. <laughs> I wish I knew. Um, it's obviously trying to add an integer and a string. Um, let me see if I can solve this uh, before we bounce out of this video. So, 
So that is... Wow, that was too much scrolling. My finger hurts. <sighs> okay, right. <laughs> uh, okay, so, so what we've done here is we basically said the string version of each MA1 plus SMA. That was why it was getting angry with us. So add one more um, to middle indicator, uh, and that's middle indicator, you know, in our animation function basically. So if middle indicator does not equal one, um, add that there, and then add that again there, and that should do it. Let's. Oh, oh, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> and this is closing it off, so we can just delete that, and let's try that one more time. <clears throat> so that was with. Uh, should have been both EMAs and SMAs. So let's say we want a three-day time frame, and let's do a middle indicator here. Uh, SMA. And there's our SMA. So we've got main indicator. Let's add an EMA of 10 as well, just because we're ballers. So now we have the SMA here. We've got the EMA is in blue. Um, and uh, we're all set, I think. So that's our graph oh, graph page. This should be like dashboard. We have like a lot of updates to make here, but hopefully you're now kind of seeing this application sort of coming to, coming together. Uh, we don't have bottom indicators and we don't have top indicator yet, but that's what we're going to be doing in the next videos. Um, but we should be able to, I believe, even change like all of this data so like we could pick 30-minute bars, hopefully. So that updates the bars. We can even pick three hour bars. This is three days. So this is a good time to point out as well, like the, the thickness of these bars. That's what was candlestick width. Um, five minute. Um, you can see there are significantly thinner bars now and all of that. It's much higher granularity data. So anyways, um, that's it for this tutorial. Uh, hopefully that was uh, somewhat rewarding after uh, quite a few videos of code and uh, now we've got a pretty sexy chart coming along here. Uh, we just need to add the top and bottom indicators and we're all set really. Um, then we need to obviously do trading and all of that. Uh, so that'll be fun. But anyways, uh, hopefully you guys are enjoying. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support, the subscriptions, and the donations. And until next time.